Welcome biologists to this session where we'll be looking at the functions that occur within the mammalian kidney. This is part two of spec point C and we're going to be taking a look today at ultrafiltration. So just to remind you, if you did look under a microscope slide at this part of the nephron um, where ultrafiltration takes place, you'll be looking at here the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. So the, so the glomerulus is the network of capillaries and the Bowman's capsule is the place in which the filtrate is going to go into. So glomerulus is where the, the blood is going to bring any kind of waste products from the blood. And these waste products are going to go into the Bowman's capsule, uh, which is part of the nephron. And we need to know how, how does that occur? And that's through the process of ultrafiltration. So when we look at our glomerulus in a little bit more detail, our network of capillaries here with that's surrounded by our Bowman's capsule. We have the afferent arterial, which brings blood to the glomerulus, and it's under a higher pressure than the efferent arterial. The efferent arterial is the blood vessel that is leaving the glomerulus. Now, it's important we use comparative statements here. The afferent arterial has a higher blood pressure than the efferent arterial because the lumen of the afferent arterial is wider than that of the efferent arterial. And due to this difference in the lumen size, it creates a higher pressure inside the glomerulus, forcing out certain substances. So anything in a red box is taken directly from the Marta scheme. So we need to know that the afferent arterial has a larger diameter than the efferent arterial. Therefore, we have a high hydrostatic pressure within the glomerulus. The endothelium wall of the capillary has small holes or fenestrations, and these are used for ultrafiltration. So out of here, out of the glomerulus, um, we're going to get, from our blood, we're going to get water forced out, urea, some salts such as sodium and, and potassium. And we'll also get small substances such as glucose and amino acids. Larger substances such as proteins and red blood cells cannot fit through the different barriers that are put in place here during ultrafiltration, which we're going to look at in a second. Um, and those substances that are forced out are called the glomerular filtrate. And that enters into the Bowman's capsule, which is part of the nephron. And that will continue into the next stage, which is selective reabsorption, which we'll look at in the next video. So ultrafiltration um, occurs because we've got these different barriers present. The first barrier that we have present is the endothelium itself, which is the actual wall of the blood vessel um, inside the glomerulus. Now, these contain tiny pores within them. We don't say holes because blood vessels don't have holes in it. Uh, these tiny pores are called fenestrations. Uh, the second barrier is called the basement membrane. Uh, and this is a barrier that stops large substances such as proteins being removed from the blood. And the last thing that we have are podocytes, which are specialised finger-like projections, which ensure the passage of substances. And you can see those uh, finger-like projections here in this image. Here is another picture to show you the different layers involved. So on this side here is my glomerulus. I have first of all my fenestrations, then my basement membrane, and then here the purple bits represent uh, my podocytes. And again, another image down here, just so you can see the three different um, barriers, if you like, through which the glomerular filtrate has to pass through in order to get into the Bowman's capsule. So I have my fenestrations, my basement membrane, and then last of all, my podocytes. So those are the main reasons as to why ultrafiltration takes place. Um, just before we move on, there are some things that can go wrong, um, which are a result of problems with ultrafiltration. So sometimes we can get swelling in our feet and our ankles, or we can get preeclampsia, which can occur in pregnant ladies. Um, the reason why we get these swelling occurring and edema occurring is normally due to higher blood pressure, which forces too much uh, fluid um, out into the glomerular filtrate and this can cause problems for us. Another reason is we've, we have protein within our urine which is not a good thing or blood in our urine and that's normally due to damaging of the basement membrane. Um, but you need to apply this to unfamiliar context uh, for your suggest questions. Uh, so there we have it, that's ultrafiltration. In our next video we'll look at selective reabsorption. Good luck with your exams.